12 kids under the age of 18 was killed, I mean, shot in Philadelphia, and two of them are actually dead. I don't... At this point, I don't know who's qualified to change the violence in Philadelphia. The one thing that I do know, somebody's character, somebody character, somebody has a fucked up character, character, disposition about them when they go home at night. Somebody has a wicked disposition about them when they go home at night. I don't know who it is, and I'm I'm not talking about the children, right? I'm talking about the adults. I can point the finger, but I'm going to point the finger at me first. What I've done for 14 years of my life may have caused the damage. No, it caused damage to a lot of our children, including mine. So I'm going to take the first initiative and say, me having a child at a young age caused damage. Because see, we got to get to the root of it. We have to get to the very, very root of this situation. A lot of our men are not going to step up and just be men about this conversation. So I'm going to give you the, fr- I'm going to hopefully what I'm saying will cause a domino effect to our men in our communities. I'm going to start off with me and say, I am the reason why a lot of our males and children are being the way that they are. Me having a child at 17, 18 is the first factor. I am a, I, I'm immature. I don't know what's going on. I'm just doing whatever I want. And now I'm bringing a child into this world where I'm already mentally fucked up. Now my child is, 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 is growing. One years old, two years old, three years old. My child has seen me in and out of his life. It was times where I did things right. And there was times where I didn't do things right. In the process, when my child turned four years old, that's when I got shot. Playing both sides of the fence. Running in the streets, not knowing where I want to be at and what I want to do. But I had the choice. I had the intellect to make the right decision. The minute I got shot is the minute that my life turned upside down. I got shot. I'm shooting. I'm on pills. I'm neglecting two of my children at the time. And for 14 years of my life. 14 years of my life, I caused damage not only to my children, but to the children of my community. So the purpose of B. McFly is being motivated comes from loving yourself. Everything that I've done to my children Everything that I've done to my community, everything that I've done to me is the reason why I changed, is the reason why I finally got off the drugs and say, let me be an example. Let me be the change that I want to see. All right. And it takes courage to do this because. So many people are fighting demons is that they don't want to show a weak side of them. They don't want to show like they don't want to show that, you know, they cry or they don't want to show that they need help or they don't want to show that side where it's like, okay, I've been a warrior all my life. Now is not the time for me to show vulnerability. Now, um, now that's just words. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking words and I feel like everybody 
that change their life around can possibly speak words too. Now it's action. Well, I'm out here in the community. I'm telling people, you know, meet me places and let's do this and let's set up. Let's come up with some solutions, so on and so forth. I'm showing you that I'm rallying, I'm protesting, I'm talking. I am doing things so people can see me. Now it's character. It's character now. When the cameras is off, I'm talking about selling drugs. I'm selling drugs. When the cameras are off, I'm on drugs. When the cameras is off, I got a gun on me. And for real, for real, I want to shoot everybody. When the cameras is off, I'm not giving a fuck about these kids. When the cameras are off, that's my true color. When the cameras are off, now I am demonstrating who I who I really who I am, for real. That's the problem. It's a lot of men out here that talk it, but their character is not really it. And when your character is not it, now we have a problem. Because who's really qualified? Who's really qualified? If I'm showing you that this is my character, if I'm showing you that I am passionate, if I'm telling you, you know, listen, I really live what I say. I'm not on drugs. I do right by my children. I am trying to be the best person that I can possibly be. Yes, I have. I'm not perfect, but I am working on it. Sometimes I even show you that I'm not perfect and I ask for forgiveness. I ask for help. I try to communicate with everybody. I try to be something that I've never been in my life. And these young guys don't want to see that. It seemed like these young guys only respect the person that been through hardships harder than this. So I say to myself, to you young guys that's listening, what you want to know, my resume? Because it seemed like you will only listen to the person that did 10, 5, 10, 15 years in prison. The person who actually, you know, talk about they caught a body or something like that. The person that walks around and, 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 and really show you that they're dangerous or whatever the case may be. That's your da So if you want to know the... If you want to listen to a real nigga, you want to know, you know, you only going to pay attention to a real nigga. Then I'm going to give you my real nigga resume. Because it seemed like you only respect. It seemed like you young boys only respect these guys that are real niggas. The guys that are dangerous. The guys that are that will still kill you right now if, you know, without even talking to you, without even trying to school you, they would just kill you. So let me give you my real resume, my real nigga resume. I'm 2-0 in the courtrooms. I stood tall on heavy cases. I shot somebody, somebody shot me. I've been locked up. I've been on drugs. I sold drugs. Are you happy now? Do you believe me? And if you believe that resume, why can't you just follow the resume that I'm showing you now? People tell me things like, you know, you're not qualified and, you know, you can't do the things that needs to be done because you don't have a resume. Well, let me tell you something about having a resume. You're not happy that I didn't do jail time? You're not happy that I'm here to help you right now? I got a son. He's 20 years old. 
he wants to do his own thing. Wasn't raised like that. Yes, I may have. I, no, it's no. I may have. I played significant a uh, significant role in his life. But at the end of the day, I bust my ass to make sure he didn't have to live the same life as me. A lot of you kids don't know what it feels like to really starve. A lot of you kids don't know what it feels like to have a drug addict mother and father. A lot of you kids don't know what it feels like to be forced to do things that you don't want to do. A lot of you kids don't know what it feels like to not have nothing. A lot of you kids are spoiled. A lot of you kids are suffering from an identity crisis. A lot of you kids got the tools. A lot of you kids have a support system. You don't know what it feels like not to have a support system. I sold drugs for my mother. I sold drugs for my mother. My mother had me at 14. See, when, when I tell this story, people say, well, we all got a story. Well, why don't you tell your story so these kids can hear it? Since we all got a story, tell your story and make sure your character is intact so you don't never have to live through that story or don't seem like at 40 years old, you're still living that same story. My mother had me at 14. My father was 16. Okay? I was neglected. My parents did not raise me. All right. So if you're going through that, I know what it feels like to go through that. I was physically abused growing up. I was mentally abused growing up. No, it no. You want to know what physical abuse is? You sleep. OK, you sleep. You dead sleep to the world and you get woken up out of your sleep for nothing. Not about what you did in class yesterday. Not about what you did today. You get woken up out of your sleep. You, they talking to you and then they just start fucking you up. So if you've been physically abused, I'm telling you my story right now. You ain't going to be shit. If a person tell you, you ain't going to never be shit. You ain't shit. You want to know what? I've been through that too. I've been through that. Where you going to go? What you going to do? Don't nobody want you? Don't nobody want you to live with them? I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to tell, yo, you ain't going to be shit. Look at your mother. Look at your father. You ain't shit. Ain't nobody going to love you. And I'm going to fuck you up. And keep fucking you up. And keep fucking you up. So when you talk about when you when you when you running around and you saying that nobody's going to understand you. Well, I just gave you some stories on why I understand you. I just gave you a testimony on why I understand you. So let's keep going. When my mother finally got herself together, guess what? I was selling drugs for my mother. I was selling large, large, large quantity of drugs for my mother. I sold a very large amount of drugs for my mother. Okay? And then once she once once she got herself together as far as selling drugs, because she got off of drugs, then she started selling drugs, and then she got caught up with the cops and all that shit in Williamsport, and then she changed her life around and just went legit. Straight legit. My father, I used to buy pills off of my father. I bought so much pills off of my father. Like, sometimes I sit back and say, how fucking dare you sell me fucking pills and you never did shit for me in your fucking life? You have never done nothing for me. But I did everything for you by buying pills off of you. I bought so many pills off of my father I gave him more money for pills than he gave me in his life. It was times where I was spending 
a hundred dollars a day on pills, buying it from him. So, if you want to talk about young men, if you want to talk about pain, you can't tell me that you've been by yourself with pain because I know what pain feel like. And for you adults that's listening, don't tell me everybody got a story. Tell your story. Tell your story. Don't tell me, oh, well, everybody got a story. No, tell your story. Because your story can save somebody. Your story is deeper than mine's. Okay, this is not the debate on whose story is worse or deeper. This is, yo, I'm telling you my story because these young kids act like don't nobody, nobody never been through what they're going through. Both of my parents are dead. My mother died from a heart attack because after 10 years of sobriety, she thought she had it under control. Out of 10 years of sobriety, she thought, she said, well, I'm never going to sell crack. I mean, I'm never going to use crack again. And you're right. She didn't. But she thought that she can drink. She thought that she can smoke weed and she wound up getting addicted to Percocets. My mother died in 2015 from a heart attack and I believe it was from mixing drugs. My father died 2020 from a heart attack. My stepmother that the fa my father was married to my stepmother for a very long time. They've been with each other since I was about seven or eight years old. They both died last year. And it's a lot of pain that I was going through trying to talk to my father, trying to be the bigger man and sit down and talk to him, work with him, get an understanding with him, and it just never worked. I never experienced my parents. I have never experienced my parents for more than 10 years. And when I mean by experience, my parents, I'm talking about loving, caring, understanding, sitting down and wiping my tears away, helping me play basketball, helping me play football, helping me um, swing, push on the swing. I'm talking about really, really understanding my parents. I have never understood my parents. Never. And you want to know why I'm so passionate? You want to know why I'm always yelling? When you want to know why I'm always fucking damn near crying and, 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 and pleading my eyes out about this shit? It's because I've been through it. I've been through it. And, I, and, 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 and addiction. A lot of y'all kids are taking pills, taking weed, smoking, drinking, doing all that shit. It's because you're not doing it for the physical pain. You're doing it for the mental pain. You are doing it for the mental pain. You can't escape. You don't want to. The reality is you've been in a fucked up situation. And the only thing that can take you out of that fucking zone is drugs, man. I get it. I get it, man. I get it. I get it. I get it. That's the only way you can cope. Because if you're sober, now what's going to happen is you in your thoughts. You in your brain. He fucked me up. He did me dirty. She left me. They didn't care about me. I had to fucking fend for myself. I had to fight every day. When I was crying for my mother to come back home, she never came back home. When I was crying for my father to come get me because I keep getting abused, he never came and got me. He never came. So that shit hurt and I get it. And the only thing you got to your name is your name. So when I tell y'all, I understand your pain. 
when I tell you I've been where you've been at, when I tell you I'm here for you, I'm not lying. I am not lying. I'm very transparent. I know what it feels like. To the black men. All your life you've been taught how to be a warrior. Don't cry. The only communication you know is aggressive. You got children out there and you don't know how to communicate with them. <laughs> that was me. A man, a man is only a man because of his age and his body structure. Strength. And yes, courage to a certain degree. But a grown man separates the, the, the outer part of a man and, 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 and let his emotions out differently as a grown man. And what I mean by that is this. They don't beat us with strength. They beat us with intelligence. You got a lot of things bottled up inside that you're afraid to tell somebody. You not stronger than me and I'm not stronger than you. What we going to get out of this if we can't talk and cope with each other? See, it's a lot of men in Philadelphia that's afraid to really tell how they really feel. You may have did time in jail and you feel like, man, I did time in jail. But you still got demons that you fighting and your trauma has been internalized. You have internalized the trauma and now you think it's the right way to be. Come on. You're hurting the village. You are hurting the village until you let that trauma out. You got to let it out. You are not a beast. You are not a beast. You are not an animal. It's okay. Talk. 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 Talk to me. Man, I don't know what to say to my child. Say anything. I don't know what to say to my woman. Man, if you tell her you love her, at ease. I don't know what to say with my man. We had a disagreement and now I just want to fight. Or I had a disagreement with main man out there and now I just want to shoot him. Nah. See, because I know both parties really don't want to go that route. But it's like, you know what? I got to show him that I'm not afraid. He got to show me that I'm not, a, he not afraid. And now, we no. You got to, like, 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 it's no more real nigga shit. That real nigga shit is played out. That real nigga credit don't get you nowhere. That real nigga credit don't pay the bills. That real nigga credit can't get you a house. That real nigga credit don't break the generational curse. Fuck that real nigga shit. Fuck it. That shit is dead, man. That shit is dead. That real nigga shit only gets you in jail. Everybody talk about, well... You know, Meek Mill said, I got a homie doing life right now. And he can't give me no money. The only thing he can give me is advice and a friendship. I talk to him seven days a week. That shit is true. That man tells me Every day, how he wish he could come home.
Everybody want to be so real. Everybody say fuck rats. Everybody say fuck the, if you if you gay or a rat, I don't fuck with you. Why are the men trying so hard to go back to Jeldon? Where all the gays and the rats is at? It's time for the men to open up, open your hearts up, open your soul up. Yo, I'm going to hug you if you're breaking down, man. I don't give a fuck how hard you are, man. I'm going to hug you if you're breaking down. Because these young guys are looking up at us and it's like you living in your second childhood and it's not making it work for them young boys, man. You are living in your second childhood and you got to break out of it. And the only way you can break out of it is if you let loose the trauma. You got to let the trauma go. You got to you got to talk it out. You got to you got to cry, cry. Don't hurt me. Cry. I know you a man. I know you strong. I know you not no bitch. I know you rough and tough. But that's not going to cure our babies. That's not going to save our babies. That's not going to save our babies. We need you men. We need you. You are. Yo, listen. You the only ones that can save our village, man. You are the only ones that can save us. The trauma has been normalized, but we're going to break it. Let's break the trauma. Let's do it, man. Be yo, listen. It's okay. I know it ain't easy. Break the trauma. Our women out there, you have been forced to do what you had to do. You have been forced to, our women have been forced to be the provider. Our women has, have been forced to be the protector. Our women have been forced to, to be the alpha parent and you guys are faced with trauma too and it's hard to believe in us because you've been doing it for so long if you are a single mother and you got boys The one thing that I'm going to need you to stop doing is raising them to be dependent. I'm going to say this again without, this is, listen, hear me out. Our boys have been raised to be dependent. A lot of our men cold heartedly depend on women. For everything. And we feel like. It's a it's normal. I grew up around women. I've watched how women treat their sons. They raise their daughters to be independent. And raise their sons to be dependent. And. A psychologist told me that. The reason why. Our women raise our sons to be dependent is because and spoil them it's because they are the only true male figures that's going to be around genuinely and love them genuinely because every other man hit it and left hit it and left or they got locked up or they weren't mature enough or they just was playing games you cannot raise a boy to be a man 
but you can raise a boy to be a gentleman. I'm going to say this again. You cannot raise a boy to be a man, but you can raise a boy to be a gentleman. And what I mean by that is teach them how to treat women. Teach them how to treat women. Teach them how to treat women as if they are gold. The prize possession. So they don't, so as they get older, they won't run out there being a womanizer like I used to be. Being a user. Depending on women to take care of me. Because I can assure you this, a lot of our women don't understand that you're treating, you're teaching your son to treat women how the man that was treating you fucked up the same way. And I'm not going to get on the women, but the one thing else that I want to say, because y'all, I can honestly say yes. Y'all have took over our village. And this is why the women don't look at us as leaders. They don't look at us as leaders because we are proving to each other that we could kill each other instead of proving to them that we can lead the village. You cannot... You... you you can't always pick the right man based off of playing games and things of that nature. But a lot of you women know that these men are no good. But you suppress your feelings anyway. Your trauma too. Because I know being alone, being, being alone, being lonely, you take a stab at it. And you know, a lot of these men are not mature enough yet. And we have babies by uh, the men that you know for a fact are not going to do nothing for them. At least at that moment. You got to cure your trauma as well. You got to get help too. Because one thing about mental health for men and women the one thing we use to suppress our mental health, sex. I'm lonely. People be calling people whores and shit like that. No, motherfuckers really be lonely looking for love because they never had love and they feel like this is the only way that they can get love. Taking a stab at it. Let me open up my legs to this nigga and let me see if he gonna stay with me. No, that's a real thing. Stop forcing your child, your daughters to have babies knowing damn well they not ready. The baby father's not ready. You not ready. And it's like they got to live through the same misery. Last but not least, black men. We got to stop debating each other. We got to stop trying to prove that I got the solutions. Stop proving to each other. Listen, I don't care if you out there and you you going hard, go hard. Stop telling the person oh, who's good for this and who's qualified for that and who should do this and who should do that. Listen, man. Ain't nobody qualified because the shit is still going. We got we got to change our character so these kids can see that this is a better way. That's it. And you know I love y'all. 
I appreciate y'all. But I just wanted to let people know that that real nigga story that's played out. I know what you're feeling and going through in real life. That's the real shit. And the reason I, I don't, my thing is I don't talk to guys that are selling drugs, making $10,000 a week. They not trying to hear me. My message is not for them. My message is not for them. I love you too. Ashley, I love you too. My message is not for them. My message is for the guy or the woman that's facing, they don't know where to go. They confuse. They feel like it's no hope. They feel like, damn, you ain't never been through what I've been through. You don't know what it feels like to be in placement. I do. I do. You don't know what it feels like. Yo, I go home every night. I go home at, at, at my age right now. I'm 39 years old. I go home every night saying, what the fuck? Who do I got left? Who do I got left? I know what it feels like. I talked to a lifer. He's been my friend since God knows how long. He wished every day he can be home. So, I just want to get that off, man. And um, I love y'all though. One love.